Can an ordinary untrained person land a plane? Definitely. Well, kind of. I'll explain it all. Coming up. Hey 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel 74 Gear is all about aviation. Today I'm here in downtown Seattle, Washington. It's probably one of the last times I'm gonna be filming here for a while because I'm changing my base. And this is a view from my hotel room. When I was going out for my very first exam as a pilot, and it's known as a private pilot check ride, when I was going out for that, the examiner said to me, you know, one day you're gonna be flying big planes and they're a lot easier to fly than the Cessna. And I thought it seemed a little bit unfair that I had to start with something so hard and that my life was gonna get easier. But if you're a passenger and you need to land a plane, that's good news. In this video, I'm gonna give you three different scenarios from best case scenario to worst case scenario. And at the end, I'm gonna give you three pointers that are very important to remember. Let's get into it. So the best case scenario actually is that you end up on a very large aircraft like a 747 or any of these right here. And the reason is that those aircraft that we're flying on have some of the most automation on them, which is gonna be helpful for you to land this aircraft. And if you end up landing an aircraft with four or 500 people on it, people are gonna think you're probably one of the coolest people on earth. And you're gonna be an aviation hero without ever taking a flight lesson. The reason why those larger aircraft are gonna be easier for you is because they have something called auto land. The auto land feature allows for the plane to actually land and stop itself assuming you punch in all the right things into the computer. I can do that. I joke that the manufacturers like Boeing and Airbus know at this stage in our career, we're very lazy as pilots and so they give us all kinds of things so we have to do as little work as possible. But in reality, it's for situations like very low visibility where a pilot would have a hard time being able to see and safely land on the runway. But with this automation, we're able to reduce the required visibility of the pilot because the plane is able to safely land on the runway by itself. And I could honestly take just about any of you watching this video right now and give you the sequence and which buttons you need to push and when, and you'd be able to safely land a 747 in the middle of the runway and have it stop. Uh, pick me, pick me. And it would actually be a pretty smooth landing. The hardest part would be taxing the aircraft. At that point, you would probably just shut down the engines and the fire teams would show up and get everybody off the plane but you'd be able to safely land that aircraft. That is the best case scenario. The next best case scenario is that you're on an aircraft like one of these. For example, the CRJ is an aircraft that I have a bunch of time flying. Now these aircraft don't have auto land, so they can't land in the middle of the runway and stop for you, but they can get you pretty low to the ground. Technically, the pilots have to click the autopilot off at two or 300 feet, but if I were you in a scenario with very little or almost no training, what I would do is take that plane to about 50 feet. The reason is that gives you less room to mess it up. And the reality is, is your landing is going to be hard and suck pretty much no matter what you do. And the autopilot on the plane is going to tell you when you're at 50 feet. So as you come in and you hit 50 feet, you'd obviously be prepared to disconnect the autopilot. And as that system counts down from 50 to 10, it's going to count down every 10 feet. When you hear something about 20 or 30, you're gonna to wanna to pull back just to get the nose to come up a little bit. And if you're looking out the front of the window, you'll see the horizon come up a little bit. That's all you're gonna to wanna to do. Just pull up a little bit, pull the power all the way back, and that's it. Let it just come down. You're gonna to wanna to lock your hand right there, let it just come down and hit the runway. You're not gonna do anything except put your feet on the brake and then stop the aircraft. That's it. Yep. It's just that easy. After that, all you're gonna do is come out of flight deck and everyone's gonna be cheering and you're gonna give them a little dab. Now the worst case scenario is if you ended up on a small aircraft like a Cessna, which has no autopilot and no features to help you. Let's say you were going on a sightseeing tour and the pilot had a heart attack. In that scenario, you're gonna have no autopilot and nothing to help you land. So that is gonna be honestly the trickiest one for you to fly because you're going to actually have to fly the aircraft. If you came prepared and you brought your parachute, then I would definitely put that on and jump out of the plane. But if you did not do that, the thing that's important to remember is that there are people who have limited or very little experience that have been able to fly and land one of these planes themselves. In the right configuration for landing, this plane is gonna be going pretty slow, maybe 60 to 70 miles per hour. So at that speed, it's gonna be something like a bad car accident, but you can definitely survive it if you do the right things. So what are the three most important things to remember if you end up in this very, very unlikely situation? 
One, you need to dial the frequency. And that frequency that you need to remember is 121.5. You're gonna have to figure out how to get it on the right radio because there are multiple radios usually in a lot of these aircraft. So you're gonna to wanna to figure out how to dial 121.5 in the plane that you're in and start talking. There is gonna be somebody that's listening to that frequency. We call it guard. But on that frequency, you're gonna talk and people are gonna be listening. Other aircraft, like an airline pilot like me would be listening. You're also gonna have air traffic control listening to that frequency. It's a safety frequency that everybody's listening to all over the world. So once you dial up that frequency, you're gonna to wanna to talk and listen for someone to talk back to you. Talk to me, Goose. Tell them either the name of the flight that you're on or the number of the plane or something so they know who you are and what aircraft it is that you're flying. Now let's say both the pilots died and you were the only one on there. If you were explaining that situation, what's gonna happen is air traffic control is going to get someone who's trained in flying Boeing aircraft to get on the radio with you and walk you through exactly what you need to do to safely bring the plane around and engage the auto land features to have it come in and land safely. The second thing to remember is the likelihood of this happening is a lot less likely than winning the lottery. If you're on a commercial aircraft, the pilots have to do a six or 12 month physical exam to verify that they're in good health. And there's two pilots up there for a reason. So the likelihood of both of them dying and you getting up there and having to fly the plane is very, very unlikely. And the third most important thing to remember, and I can't stress this enough, is that you are never out of the fight. You may have remembered one of the first Hollywood versus reality videos that I did on the movie Flight. And one of the things that I really did like about that movie is that Denzel is never out of the fight and he's always trying something to get the aircraft to land safely. Now, of course, he's an experienced pilot, so it's a little bit different, but that's a very important thing to remember. If you've never seen the Hollywood versus reality that I did on flight with Denzel Washington, I'll put a link to it right here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.